Zendaya here. And I wanted to say thank you so much um, for coming. And this is episode one of Variety Views. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, so also real quick, if you want to see how I accomplish this like Afro tribal style, stay tuned and watch till the end because it'll be after all of this. So today's um, segment is called Download. And we're going to be talking about cuties. No, not the oranges. Uh, the uh, movie that's been out, that came out recently, that's controversial. That's what we'll be talking about today. And I also do want to ask you guys, please, please, please do not let your children watch this, listen to this, um, because it is extremely inappropriate. And I hate to be the one... Um, that they hear me speak about this. So, <laughs> yes, please protect your baby's ears. Uh, I also want to say I did not watch this movie whatsoever. I did not because I just, it was just too disturbing to even do this segment for you guys. But I had to because I just, um, there's mixed reviews and I just need to get out how I feel and see how you guys feel as well. So I think we should get right into it. Uh, number one, the film was made in Paris. And the director, her name is, she's a female, her name is uh, Maimouna Daucour. Maimouna Daucour, Daucour. I think I'm saying that right. Well, she, you know, everybody was like backlashing at her and coming after her. But she honestly thinks that this was a beautiful choice of hers and that this was to raise awareness and was to do good, not hurt, right? So Netflix got wind of this project. They reached out to her and, you know, they decided to team up with her to put this movie on their platform to help raise awareness. Um, and the movie also won an award, Cuties won an award for Best Directing at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival this year. I do not know how or why or who voted or who, like, how they became in a uh, nominee, but yeah. So then let's get into the nitty-gritty details. So the girls that tried out for the Cuties movie, let's talk about their ages, right? They ranged from ages... 10 to 14 years old. So preteens and um, adolescents, right? So 10 to 14 years old. And it was estimated to be 650 girls that tried out for the movie as well. So yes, 650 girls' families decided that this was just such a great idea to have them try out for. And the audit. This is the sick. The most sickening part to me is that the auditions alone were six months long. Six months. Y'all needed to watch six hundred and fifty girls twerk, gyrate, and hump the air and the ground for six months. Okay. Uh, so then. That kind of had me wondering, you know, who are these girls who made the part, who got the leading roles, right? How old are they in real life? What do they look like in real life? And so the first, the first girl that I uh, found, which was the, like the main character, because she was the one who was kind of trying to get the girls, egging them on, trying to get them to gyrate along with her and learn how to quote unquote twerk correctly. And so, uh... This young lady's name in real life is Fatia Youssef. She's a 14, she's estimated to be about 14 years old, you know, and she has no other credits uh, other than this movie. So before Cuties, she really didn't have any clout. So she plays an 11 year old girl named Amy, and she's a girl originally from Senegal who lives in Paris with her single mother and her two brothers. And I think that that right there disturbed me too. Like if you listen to what I just said, the girl in real life is 14, right? They decided to make her younger. 
Okay, they decided to make her younger instead of leaving her 14, right? Now, I also do want to point out that America, when they make movies, like the United States, they make movies and they want to, like, shed light on a young female or, you know, an adolescent. So they'll take an old, much older girl, like 18, 17 years old, and have her play, like a young looking girl, have her play a younger role, older to younger. In other countries, it's not the same. As you can see, they took this 14-year-old girl and instead of keeping her 14, at least, I guess, if they in some sick world, they decided to make her younger, okay, um, 11. They decided to make the main character 11 years old. So also, you know, and people were like, oh, this movie can't be that bad, right? So I just wanted to point out, and I found this on my, you know, Facebook or whatever, that in the movie, at one hour and eight minutes and 23 seconds, the movie plays this main character, Amy, taking a photo of her genitalia and sending it to someone. So that to me is like, first of all, what does that have to do with, you know, um, showing the over-sexualization? Of women in social, uh, girls, and I said women, oh my gosh, girls, because they're tiny little girls on social media. Well, I can say that I know a few girls that were my age back in school, like this, around this age, who fell victim to, oh, this guy really likes me, so I'm going to send him a picture of my private parts because he asked me to, and it's like, no, girlfriend, mm -mm. like that is just way too young. Nobody should be sending nudes because nudes get leaked, okay, first of all. Second of all, it's cringy that, yes, there are kids this age doing this because now they can also. Like, I didn't have a, a cell phone at 14. That's something I want to point out, too. Like, we didn't have this kind of technology back then. And so... It just blows my mind that they thought that to raise awareness, like, to show this, right? So I was just like, okay. So then, second girl. Her real name is Medina El Adi Azumi. And she, in real life, she is 12 years old. She has no other clout or credits after this uh, before this movie either. And so they decided to keep her 12 years old. So she's 12, but they decided to keep her 12 for the movie. And she is the youngest character on the movie. And she does, uh, so I was trying, I did, I was able to get some pictures of her, but the, her private social media is private, it's private for social media, probably because of everything that's going on. But she plays a girl. Um, she plays a girl, what's that girl's name? Oh, Angelica. Yeah, she plays a girl named Angelica, who, like I said, who's 12 years old. And, yeah, disturbing. The third girl, Esther Goru, Goru. she's in real life 14 years old. And she, in the movie, is also 14 years old. And she plays, like, the quote-unquote cool girl named Komba, Komba. And this girl, Esther, as well, has private social medias and doesn't have much, many, um, you know, much clout before this movie as well. Not many pictures and so on and so forth. So then the fourth girl, Alana Kami Gorsolas, she's in real life 14, about 14 years old. And... In the movie, she plays a 14-year-old girl named Jess. Now, Ilana, Ilana's um, private, social medias are private as well. Once again, not much clout or, you know, anything from her before this movie. So it was, like, very hard for me to even find this information. And, you know, so they pick these four girls out of uh, 650 of them and you know I, I was looking at some articles like reading up on these girls and they were really like uh admiring the work that these little girls were doing like saying oh it's it's you know it's very impressive that this young girl they were talking about uh the girl Fatia Yusuf 
say, oh, this girl, she was, you know, she just was remarkable. And out of the audition, she just took our breath away. And I'm like, I bet she did, you perverts. Uh, and <laughs> so this movie caused, like, a lot of uproar, obviously, and I can see why. You know, and half of my Facebook was pro cuties. Pro cuties saying, uh, you know, look at the whole picture. Look at the whole picture. And then the other half was like, oh, hell no uh, to the whole idea. So, for instance, you had the people saying, like, look, I know it looks bad, but you're just going based off the clips that you see. Of course, you're going to think the movie is just ridiculous. But <laughs> the part that I need, I needed people to understand is that it's not about the fact that they are showing that they are um showing parts bits and pieces it's the fact that it's even being recorded because it, I, it, just seeing it i just wanted to throw up it was disgusting i couldn't even sit there and record a young woman of a young girl i keep saying woman because i i just can't fathom my head around the ages of these girls Watching them, recording them do this, like, it just hurt me to see it. I couldn't even watch all of it, all, all of the video clips. And so, and then, the, you know, so then, so then there was, like, this hashtag called Cancel Netflix because Netflix didn't take it down. first poster that they posted for the movie was absolutely disgusting. You can see the girls are in half shirts, short shorts, and in sexy poses. And that was just disturbing. And so they took it down and apologized. And that didn't help them look any better. Okay. So, <laughs> so they were just like starting a, a hashtag called cancel Netflix because of all of this, y'all. And, you know, they were saying that the purpose, the main, main purpose, like, because they were still trying to push the purpose for this movie and why it's actually a for the greater good, right? They were saying the purpose of the movie was to shed light to the over-sexualization of young girls in society today, like social media, dance, and pageants, and etc., right? Which I could, I could see, but that was the other, that was the part where they messed up, because they didn't, they made the movie, they put out the movie, but in the movie description, there is no talk of bringing awareness whatsoever to over-sexualization. There's no message, period, right? It's like this director got the backlash and she was just like, wait, 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 wait. Let me tell you why I made the movie. Like, no, bitch, you can't make the movie first and then when it's out, try to clean up the mess. You already made the mess, okay? You can't clean it up. And... So there was no mention of it bringing awareness at all. So there's a fail on her behalf. The video clips, like I said, are cringy. And it was just almost impossible for me to finish this content because it hits so close to home for me. Since I have daughters, I have a 10-year-old. I lose my mind if, just even if I even caught her dancing like that. And so it just hits so, it hits so much home to me. It hits close to home to me. Uh, but anyway, so these girls in this movie, people were like, well, why is it so bad? Why is it so bad? These 12 to 14-year-old girls are twerking, arching. This is things that I've seen in the video, right? Uh, twer twerking, arching up the back, bouncing their butts, touching each other's butts grabbing each other's butts, throwing their butts back, um, making sex faces, like orgasm faces, doing the crybaby on the floor. I know y'all from the 90s know exactly what I'm talking about when I say the crybaby, okay? Um, <laughs> makeup, okay? They had a bunch of makeup on, like, to make them look older, I guess. They had crop tops on, like, crop tops, okay? Right up here short shorts and tight clothes all a big oh hell no for me okay and so what did we get from this so america decided okay so this movie came out we're going to blame netflix right the netflix they're a big corporate company and 
they make money regardless, right? If you, if we hate them or not, or if we don't agree. So instead, they, what did they decide to do, y'all? They decided to blame a black woman. They, instead of blaming the director, they decided to blame Cardi B. They were blaming Cardi B's song, right? People are now car blaming Cardi B's song, WAP, for the craziness um, that's going on, for the Cuties movie, for, that, for them dancing like this, for young girls dancing like this, right? And <laughs> which is crazy to me because this woman is 28 years old or 27 years old. She used to be a stripper, right? She don't make music for children. Neither does Megan the Stallion, neither does Trina, Lil' Kim, okay? None of those female rappers make ABC 123 music. They make WAP music. Like, come on, they make stripping music. Like, come on, y'all know this. So why try to blame a black woman for that, okay? But we, we always get the heat, so I get it. I get it. Um, <laughs> honestly, if you ask me, who they do need to blame is not Cardi B, not women who are older making rap music, right? They need to blame uh, these kids' parents, number one, because the parents signed their children up for this. They decided to let grown men and grown women judge their children twerking and gyrating. So we just found out that there's 650 kids that have terrible parents, okay? Uh, <laughs> Dance Moms, I know you guys have seen that show. That was a terror. Dancing Dolls of Atlanta. You see how they shake their booties and gyrate at from like four and up. Okay. And then you have stuff like Tiara, Toddlers and Tiaras, uh, where they dress up and look like, you know, have shirts and they're only like three, four years old. So, and let's also not forget about TikTok and Triller because y'all little 10, 11, 12 year old girls, daughters, okay, and sons be on there too, twerking and gyrating, acting like they're sexually active and they may be sexually active, but nobody's talking to them. We don't wanna talk about that either. Um, and they're putting it online, okay? So let's, let's, let's not forget about those things. Let's not blame Cardi B and rappers. Let's blame the things that are affecting our children for real, for real, because they have access to. So, um, so the movie Cuties was just like so terrible, right, that even Senator Ted Cruz of Texas had to jump in and he officially asked the Department of Justice to investigate to see if Netflix violated federal child pornography laws by putting this controversial film on its platform. So <laughs> he's not having it either, y'all. He, he saw this and definitely it caused a red flag to go up on his brain where he had to actually make a legal move. So now it's not just backfire that they're getting, they're also having the federal, the federal government after them now, y'all. Uh, so and they think that uh, they a conspiracy theory from this movie is that they think the movie was a push to piss off Donald Trump because he is fighting the deep state uh, ring of pedophiles and cannibals conspiracy theory of course but I just figured I'd tell you guys that <laughs> so to wrap it up though from this segment because it's getting deeper and I'm sure it's going to get much more deeper than this it's just a big no for me no not cute whatsoever you know I can't really say too much you know because yeah, I danced grown at times because I thought it was funny or cute at like 11, 12 years old, but it wasn't. It wasn't cute, you know? And also, I'd like to point out, I wasn't dancing like this to audition for uh, in front of adults. I was doing this with my, my silly little friends, you know, in the mirror when our parents weren't paying attention or weren't in the room, you know what I mean? We, were, we had to sneak to be bad, you know, sneak to get away with this kind of stuff not blatantly have our moms sign us up for shit like this. So I just want to say you guys need to protect your babies and understand that it is much more deeper than an audition. These people were totally <laughs> taking you guys for advantage, taking you, taking advantage of you and your children. And now your children are going to have a terrible 
reputation throughout their life, or at least for the for next three years because of this terrible movie that sheds a light on pedophilia and how corporate America pretty much has a bunch of them in there. So anyway, I'll see you guys. Stay tuned for the next video, next segment. Bye. Okay, hello guys. This is your girl Daya here, and this is the Bad Girl Report segment. And today we're going to try the Afro tribal look together. So yeah, I would normally wash my hair when I do a try a different look, but it was already pre-washed and um, I had co-washed it and everything like that and did a wash and go. So I'm just going to spray it wet with a little bit of a uh, mixture with conditioner and water. Okay, so after you're done rubbing that mixture of conditioner and water in your hair, I have put the Africa's Best Maximum Strength Super Grow uh, moisturizer in my hair. I like to use it because it's like a creamy, consi creamy like consistency and it just feels really good in my hair. So I take a little bit of that, about that much, and rub it in the palm of my hand and just rub it throughout my hair from the root to the tips. You want to make sure you rub that in thoroughly and then go to your next step. Okay, so once that's all rubbed in, I went ahead and grabbed my rat tail uh, brush and split my hair down the middle all the way from the front to the back because I was trying to go for like a a two afro puffs kind of look instead of like a high puff or anything like that so I went ahead and parted all the way down and uh, made sure I brushed the sides away from each other to make sure it's a clean slice down the middle Okay, so I went and grabbed a scrunchie to put the one side away so that I can get it as neat and fresh looking as possible. Okay, so I grabbed my rat tail brush again and I want to part one side to from ear to ear. Okay, so once I did my part from all the way to my ear, I separated the front and the back. So once again, it looks good. And then you're going to do that same thing to the other side. Okay, so then I grabbed my Strength 3 Herbal Essence Curl Boosting Mousse. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to put some of that in my hand and rub it through the front section of hair that I have and oh you saw that that was so funny when that happened <laughs> my Denman brush and comb that brush that through to detangle any knots that I may have okay so I'm just going to after I put the mousse in and detangled, do a twist all the way down past my ear. And you know, if you want to have it to stay like a smooth kind of twist, 
you want to make sure you pull out the hairs and detangle as you twist your strand of hair. Okay, and then I'm just going to do those steps all over again on the other side. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and take the back down of my hair and fluff that out. And then I'm going to grab my wide tooth comb and just detangle that as well a little bit. Okay, then I grab like medium sized pieces of hair and use that Herbal Essence Curl Boosting Mousse so that the, my twists come out super curl defined and just very pretty. So I went ahead and did chunky twists all over the back of my hair, like such. So you see here that I did the chunky twists all over my head and I'm going to go to sleep and wake up the next day and continue. Okay, so it's the next day and now I'm going to take out these chunky twists and finish the look. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and take the front twist down. And then I'll be gelling the edges down to make it look neat. So now I'm going to use the Ampro Pro Style Protein Gel to gel down my edges. And if you look here, it's like a tarish color. But it's kind of light itself as well. That's why I really like it. And then I'll get my brush after I put that on the edges and brush those in. So as you can see here, I just take that brush and lightly uh, just brush those down along with the gel. So I just take a little bit more mousse to get the front twist very nice. Okay, so now I'm going to take my wide tooth comb and detangle the front like so. And then I'm going to take a very small section of hair from that medium piece of hair. And I'm going to begin the flat twist all the way down, the flat twist all the way down to my ear. Okay, so now I'm going to use the free tris extension twist that I had from a couple months ago left over and I'm going to show you a technique that I'm going to use to open the strand but this is how it looks up close and you can see it has a loop because I used it to crochet in my hair before but I take my rat comb and I go ahead and just, like strip it all the way down and split the two strands of the twist apart from each other as neatly as possible because the hair develops frizz as you can see if you don't do it kind of softly and then so but to fix that you grab that mousse shake it up pour it in your hand and just go ahead and put it in the strands of hair like that to get it nice and wavy and pretty back to new again.
Okay, so I'm gonna grab that strand of twist that I grabbed. And pretty much what you're gonna do is you're gonna blend it in with your hair as much as possible. So how I accomplish that is I grab that um, fake hair and then I grab my real hair. And as you can see, it's kind of like a braid at first. I braid it in and then I turn it into a twist by grabbing, making the three strands of hair into two. And to keep it silky smooth, you can add a little bit of gel or a little bit of that foam to keep it nice and slick, but you want to braid it, I'm, I'm sorry, twist it all the way down. Okay, so we twisted it down, now let's do the same thing on the other side. All right, so let's grab our hair jewels and I'll show you what they look like up close. They have a little clamp you can open like that. And you wanna just put them in the part of the twist that kinda look like bulky and funny looking and that just doesn't match with your real hair. Okay, so then you're going to go ahead and take the back portion out of your hair. And I went ahead and grabbed the Africa's Best Super Grow Moisturizer again to just loosen up my curls and twists. And you can see I just put like a tiny dime size amount. That's all you need. You're going to put it throughout your hair and scalp from the root to the end. Next, you're going to see me take the twist down in a way where I start from the bottom to the roots, but can you see that curl pattern, guys? Oh my goodness. You can see it in my face, and I'm just like ecstatic at how bouncy and just like defined that this curl, these curls have come out. So definitely, it's a yes for me for the essence, herbal essence um, curl warmer for me guys because just look at that I'm amazed yes okay so I'm on the last twist and I'm taking it down and I'm just like still appreciating how these curls have just come out guys I'm just like scratching my scalp and looking at it and yeah just let's just take the time to appreciate these this curl pattern one more time. I mean, look at that. They're just stretchy and they, they keep their curl pattern in form and it's just amazing. So again, I grabbed that wide tooth comb and picked out and fluffed out my hair, making sure not to mess up the part that I made in the back so that I can make my two Afro puffs So at this point, I had already applied gel to my edges so that I can brush them up and put my hair into the two afro puffs, like so. So now I have my toothbrush and that protein gel again and I'm just going to apply the gel to my edges and then once I feel satisfied with the amount of gel I'm using I'm going to take my toothbrush and start gelling down those edges. Now I do want to add that I am not a pro at like slaying my edges yet. But I'm hoping through my natural hair journey that this will become way more easier and I can show you guys how to slay them a little bit better than what I did in this video.
So there you have it, guys. I really ended up liking this look. I liked how I did my edges and the jewelry and just like how the curl pattern came out. And I'm just so excited. And I do need to cut the ends a little bit, but that's okay. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Bye.